Hi everyone, welcome back to JPWHU TV. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're keeping well and and you've been able to enjoy the majority of the weekend just gone. I know it's very, very stressful for most of us. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the West Ham 21-22 season accounts. So guys, I'm going to try and make this as fly through as possible. Um, there's going to be a lot of jump cuts because there's. I'm going, to be, I'm going to need to read out the majority of the stuff that I think you guys are going to need, and obviously cut out the things that I don't think you're going to need. Um, but let's, guys, let's just jump straight into it. I was going to do the share. I was going to share the video. Um, sorry, share the screens as I as I normally do. For, well, at least the Patreons know that I like to share the screens, but it's it's just not feasible, unfortunately, guys. It really, really isn't because the the way that the way that the account document is set out, it's not very. Um, it's not very consistent, um, so there's loads of cutting about all over the place, so it's just not really quite relevant to, to, to do that. Um, but as I did last year, the um, link in the description is will take you directly to the page you need to, to have a look at the account. So, so let's crack straight on to it. Now, as you guys remember, I, would have, I said that we were heading into a quarter of a billion pound in debt going into the season we're going to talk about. And I kind of... I didn't get it wrong, but I didn't get it right at the same point. In my personal opinion, um, I did project that we would we would be going into some heavy, heavy water, and I did say that you know that the things were getting worse and something has to change. Last season's accounts showed that as of the end of the twenty twenty one season, we were eighty nine point one two seven million pounds in debt. So you know there was a, there was a quarter of a billion pound loss. Um, from that point of view, but at the same point, guys, it's just very, very, um, it's very, very difficult to be able to project these things properly. Of course, you know, because it's something I that we're all human at the end of the day, and I didn't really um, go into too much detail about why. But as I say, at the end of the day, I was right, but I was wrong at the same point. And you guys know me; I'm more than happy to admit when I'm wrong, and I'm also admit to admit when I'm right. Um, but anyway, guys, let's jump straight into it. So the listings of the directors, as always, David Sullivan, surprise, surprise, is at the top of the two, of the tree of directors. Next is Daniel Kretinsky, appointed the 12th of November 2021. We will go into it in a bit more detail. David Gold, Baroness Brady, Andy Mollett, the uh, company secretary. Daniel Harris, J. Albert Smith, we all know him as Trip Smith. Uh, Daniel Cunningham, appointed the same day as Daniel Kretinsky. Jack Sullivan, appointed four days later on the 16th of November 2021. David K. E. Sullivan, a.k.a. David Sullivan Jr., appointed on the 12th of November 2021. Uh, Pavel Horsky, appointed on the same day, 12th of November, but resigned on the 25th of August, and his replacement was uh, Jiri Savic. I'm not really sure. Sh or Shavak, I don't even know how you really pronounce that. Um... So, you know, from that point of view, um, it's no surprise in any shape or form. I'm not going to go into Baroness Brady's wages. It's it's not really relevant. It's appalling, we know. We're absolutely appalling. But at the same point, it's just not relevant. So as I say, guys, there's going to be a lot of jump cuts on this because there are 56 pages of documents. I'm not going to read out every single thing. Um, but it is it is very, very stressful to go through and I'll say I'm just going to try and give you the salient points I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible but it does there's a lot of self propaganda in this as you can as you can appreciate um especially for those that have been watching the videos over the last few years but at the same point you know it's just I'm going I'm just going to give you what I I personally would want to talk to you guys about it's not going to go into too much accountancy detail for those that have been watching the channel for the last few years I'm not an accountant in any shape or form but I can. I've got basic mathematics in my in my in my ball. Um, so, so you know, in my in my brain. So, so you know, so there you go. So uh, the results and dividends. The results of the group are set out in the consol um, consolidated statement of comprehensive income on page twenty seven, which we will talk about at one point. The shareholders remain focused on growth and success of West West Ham United and the new investment made during the year that will facilitate these aims. If you are reading this document. And you do not on your computer, for example, and you want to know where I am, this is page four. 
Um, in line, with, so obviously the, the previous page was the director's details. In line with the strategic decision taken when the majority shareholders acquired the Kevin Club in 2010 to reinvest all surplus into the squad and infrastructure, and in keeping with all the years since they took ownership in 2010, the directors do not propose do not propose the payment of dividend, but I, AKA to take any um, the inherit the um, interest as we as we've as we've known again we will go we will go on to that so the consolidated balance sheet can be found on page 28 which we will talk about and those total shareholders deficit has, has decreased from 31st of may 2021 by 134.1 million pounds and again we'll find out why this is now a surplus of shareholder funds due to the profit for the financial year and a new in Equi um, equity investment of 125.0 million pounds during the year which again we will go through uh it does then it does waffle on about the change of the climate of covid blah 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 okay so going over to page five as they predicted uh, sorry as they stated on the website a turnover of 252.7 million pound which was up 60 million pounds on the 2021 season with all areas of the club driving income, including match income, commercial income, and real retail income. The broadcasting revenue is £163.6 million. This year includes all of the Euro Europa League income, the, the positional fee awarded for finishing 7th in the Premier League, and facilities facility fees for having been selected for 23 live Premier League matches. Last year's broadcasting income, aka the 20-21 season, included the deferral of the last nine games from the previous season into the financial year of 2021 the recognition of facility income for these nine live matches and the positional fee of finishing sixth which again we will go into in a little bit further detail match income was up 40.8 million pounds which um, in comparison to 2021 uh which was uh, at 30 sorry 41.3 million pounds and um, because obviously boosted but but um, boosted by the fact we were in Europa League and we were able to go back towards the end of the 2021 season commercial income at 34.7 million pounds also reflects a whole season with fans present in corporate hospitality and the extra games against 19.4 previous season which predominantly used sponsorship and partnership income and no hospitality income Again, we weren't there. Uh, retail was up £3.4 million, so that £13 million exactly as, as all outlets were open throughout the season. Okay, being reopened out of, once we came out of COVID for the second time. Uh, notably, the store was which performed especially well during the Europa League nights. Understandable. The primary reason for a change in profit of, of £10.5 million from the net loss of £26.5 million, a positive improvement of £37 million, which, yeah, if you've got basic mathematics, you work that one out, in the, is the increase in the turnover noted above, lower automisation and lower interest costs, partially offset by higher player and staff costs and lower profit on disposable players. So basically, spending more on the players that we, that the, we brought in at the um, at the end of the season and this this the lower the basically the loss of players that we sold quite frankly uh there's been negligible impact of covid in the 2021 season blah 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 last season the total impact sorry the total estimated impact on the club's financial results caused by covid-19 the pandemic resulted in inst inability blah 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 was the increase uh, was to increase the loss for the year by 12 and a half million pounds uh yeah on the right, might as well put that in on on the, on the pitch under the guidance of football management the team put in some very strong performances throughout the season finishing seventh and finishing no, finishing the season in seventh place and ultimately reaching the semi-finals of the Europa League in domestic competitions we reached the fifth round of the FA Cup and the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup there was also progress across the club as West Ham United women's first team continued to make positive forward strides. The team achieved their highest women's Super League points tally since the club turned professional in 18-19 season, as well as an impressive runs in both domestic competitions, cup competitions, the semi-final of the Vitality Women's FA Cup and the quarter-final of the Continental Tires League Cup, a.k.a doing slightly better than the men's um and then it just go waffles on about a little bit of just a da, blah, blah, blah. you know the club the pathway from the club's rev revered ca academy of football remains as strong as emma as ever uh demonstrated by recent debuts of academy players in last season's europa league group stages with several academy players breaking through and being handed first team debuts in the past year aka the last 12 months 
To date, the academy has produced 166 first-team players since 1952, with a focus on that figure continuing to increase. The club continues to make a positive impact across our community alongside West Ham United Foundation, which is based in Beckton, Newham. Our work extends across East London, Essex and international sites, spanning all ages and abilities, harnessing the power of football to maximise life changes, sorry, life, maximise life cha chances and expiring, sorry, <laughs> expiring, inspiring better futures for all. And then it goes on about a few little bits and pieces, which again, now come, which again is very, very self-flagellation. And now we come to the most important part, and it's also stated in the document that, and I quote, the most important development off the pitch was the new investment by 1890 Holdings AS, the entity controlled by Daniel Kutinsky, in acquiring 20% equity in WH Holding Limited. £125 million was invested in the group. So basically, you times that by five, and that's how much David Sullivan thinks the club is worth, quite frankly. The transition took place on 10th of November 2021, and at the same time, sorry, just, just pop, get rid of that pop-up, uh, 1819 Holdings also acquired a further 7% of WH Holding Limited from certain existing directors. Now, we wonder who those certain existing directors are, or maybe in one way, were so yeah let's let's have a let's have a quick look at this right okay so 125 million yep times five because obviously five times 20 is 100 is 100 percent at 625 million pounds that the club is apparently estimated to be yeah uh this new funding when utilized went um to clear down the existing debt with shareholder loans of 53 and a half million pounds and a cured interest of 4.6 being settled immediately from the proceeds so aka loans wiped in addition 25 million of the five-year lo loan provided by msd holdings limited which we talked about beforehand it was prepaid was repaid on the 21st of february 2022 and the remaining proceeds were retained in the company to invest in the playing squad in the summer transfer window which we all know and again we will come on to the because that is broken down by what was sold and what was spent uh the existing 95.0 million MSD facility on 26th of February, two th February 2021 remains in place. During the, dr the year, drawdowns of 25 million from the new facility were utilized, aka cashed in, 20 million pounds on 2nd of September and five on the 20 uh, 28th of October to provide short-term capital. And these were repaid on the 21st of February 2022. So basically, as I say, all debts paid for. As one of the fastest growing brands in world football, the club mm, the club is now focused on continuing to grow its stature both domestically and internationally, maximising the presence, reach and exposure of the club by championing our values in key targeted territories. And it waffles on about how fantastic it is that the stadium's gone to 62,500, and which is the significant increase in attendance. It's another positive step forward for the club in ultimately reaching the stadium's full capacity. This has made the London Stadium one of the largest in the capital, boasting one of the highest capacities in the Premier League, uh, with the highest number of season tickets of all Premier League teams, even though technically it's not really relevant because it came in this season and not last, which, which is what we're talking about. We will continue to drive the stadium forward, forward to realise its potential and maximise the opportunity it provides for the clubs and its supporters uh yeah okay we'll see that whenever that ever happens obviously there's talk with the government to have the naming rights bearing in mind that betway's contract is up at the end of this season so it'd be interesting to see what happens with that not just with who the next sports bet um sporting company is going to be if there is indeed going to be an ex another uh, sponsorship with from a sporting company and also for that matter um you know who's going to name who's going to have the naming rights to the stadium and also in the not too distant future as well with you know Ambrose contracts coming up soon as well year or so if i remember correctly so that'd be interesting so keep an eye out for that uh, here we go the club's strong relationship with the manager will con continue to assist in building and improving the squad not if you believe what Betway have been saying tonight. Um, the loyal, loyalty displayed by the club's fra um, fan base, indicated by the levels of renewals of the 22-23 season, aka this one, of 95%, despite the increase in capacity to 62,500, gives us the highest number of season ticket holders in the Premier League, putting the club in a strong position as we move forward. Mm. 
Yeah, we need to be moving forward because we can't move any further down, quite frankly. Um, the club continues to offer one of the cheapest season tickets in the Premier League. Blah, 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 Which is just, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so on page 10, as I've jumped forward a few a little bit, it says long long term consequences. Which is long, um, long, um, bullet point one, long term sustainability and viability of business model. We continue to invest substantial funds into into the playing squad in order to maximize the best possible chances of achieving success from the football pitch halfway through the season now guys <laughs> the group's adherence away from premier league financial fair play rules ins ensures sustainable responsible and transparent spending uh then it waffles on about a little bit more about employees which is very important but for as a football fan it's not really important to us uh league position seventh fa cup round fifth E EFL Cup round fifth, Europa League semi-final, average ten league gate fifty nine thousand seven hundred and eighty nine per match, which is total bollocks. No way in hell have we got fifty nine and three quarter thousand people sitting in there. Never in a million years. It does say it's the second lowest in the last five seasons because it does confirm about the nineteen to twenty season. But that's more down to the fact that there was only nine. Was it eight or nine games were we able to, we were, that were able to be played? Much less was it three or four at home? So it's not really relevant from that point of view. Um, operating profit of seventy point five million pounds in the twenty one twenty two season. A wage turnover ratio of fifty three point seven percent, which is actually the lowest in the last five seasons. In case you were wondering, uh, as I jumped far quite far ahead. Um, Nicky was totally right when he was saying about in the accounts that they, they do stipulate for a any procedures in, in the case of uh, releg relegation. Um, but to be fair, he's, even though he's completely right, 100% right, it is mentioned in the accounts on quite a few seasons now. So you take that with a little bit of pinch of salt should we say because they always automatic all all premier league clubs probably i very much doubt the top six top seven top eight whichever whichever way you want to look at it but the majority of premier league clubs will have a backup plan in case of relegation it's not just i mean obviously nicky made it because it's obviously that's what everybody's thinking at the moment um as nicky quite rightly said on sunday west ham is slowly uh, sleepwalking to relegation can't disagree in any shape or form in natural fact there's hardly any time i've ever n disagreed with what nikki said um but yeah it's it is it's 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 worrying times but at the same point guys um we you know we've we've seen this we've seen this all, all before many many times we've seen this all before so it is a bit boring to talk about it at the same but but you know, this is this would, but we're focusing on the on the uh, the accounts. But as I said, we we know we did we are focusing on the fact that what the accounts say, but we can't ignore the elephant in the room, which is more than one. To be honest with you, I mean, both Moyes and or Lampard could be sacked on Saturday or maybe even Sunday or Monday, depending on the coming Monday, and depending on the results of how the game against Everton at home is. So you could class it as El Sakiko. We'll talk about that in the preview, but we should be coming up on Thursday around about three o'clock. So keep an eye out for that, guys. You know, there's there, there was a pro there was a profit on operating activities before interest and taxation of sixty nine sorry sixty seven point nine million pounds. Uh, so profit before tax twelve point two million pounds, and profit um, for the financial year after tax ten point five million pounds. So we, it's nice to see that again for the second season in a row after tax we've made. Over ten million pound profit, only just in this in this instance, but I'm um, just as I say, I'm going to try and miss, make this as brief as possible. I appreciate that I've been going for where are we? Well, it's twenty two minutes on the clock at the minute, so <laughs> it's not exactly brilliant. Um, purchase of player registration seventy four point one. That's basically yeah, that's that's a lot. That's a lot of money. And proceeds from disposable player registrations net cost is twenty four point four million pounds. Amortization uh, of cost of player registrations, forty-eight point eight million pounds spent on that, um, etc., etc. So the net cash flow from operating activities, seventy point nine million pounds in total. Uh, so, which basically, guys, brings us round to 
at the end of end of the accounts, at least at least from the boring side of things. Uh, to as of June. 2021, £89.1 million pounds in debt, as we mentioned at the start of the video. Cash flows of £130 million. Pounds. That's including Kratinsky's two investments. That's the money from the Premier League, TV broadcasting companies. I'm not just saying Sky and BT, because as we know, guys, our games are broadcast all over the world. And obviously, like the, the 20th share of the pot from the Premier League, etc., etc., etc. So you take Kratinsky's money out of that, yeah, that's that's a shitload of debt we would have had to deal with because if we hadn't had that investment, we would be looking around about almost two hundred million pounds in debt. As a result of it, we are the club at the time at the end of the twenty one twenty two season was forty point eight, almost forty one million pounds, forty point eight nine two million pounds in the black. No longer in the red in the black so guys thank you very very much for your time so this is going to be massively condensed down i'm going to try and edit out as much as as much as possible um but that's that's the crux of it now that will explain why well, so, uh, why you know to say for the, the the season we spent there was about 70 80 million pounds on on players that's but with everything down that's 40 million pound money to play with shall we say for this coming season for this season that we're currently in i should say so guys thank you very very much for your time thank you to everybody that subscribed to the channel to get to keep us over 220 uh, 2220 subscribers it's fantastic it's been brilliant to see you as i say guys i will be recording the preview for the uh everton game on wednesday so it'll be available on thursday for yourselves um and of course, the Patreons will will get to see that as well, for that matter, in, well in advance. Going back to the usual, now I've got a decent internet s system. I can upload these videos, and it doesn't take a, heart, a third of the time that it does when I was we were, we, we were when we had BT beforehand. And hence the reason why, with the exception of a fuck up from the Fire Stick, um, everything was fine with the with the Wolves watch along that we did. So, guys, thank you very much for your time. As I say, the preview for Everton will be coming up on Thursday. The match reaction will be up on Saturday night as well, so keep an eye out for that. If you haven't already done so, make sure, for those that are subscribed, please hit your notification bell buttons to all. And for those that haven't subscribed, please do so. And if you want to support the, the channel on Patreon, links are in the description below. But in the meantime, guys, look after yourselves, take care, and I'll see you very soon. All the best.